Linus Tech Tips coverage of PAX 2013 is brought to you by Western Digital, Intel, and SteelSeries. So we're here with Stephen Baker, the lead sound designer on Strife, and we're going to get into exactly what his unique contribution is to this game after we talk a little bit about the general stuff. So you guys got to differentiate from other MOBAs. How are you going to make it accessible for the noob and yet customizable enough for the experienced players? Well, there's a lot of fresh design techniques that our designers did. Uh, some of them include the gold sharing mechanic. When you are in a lane with someone and you get a last hit, you actually share that gold with your lane mate. And that helps to really uh, reduce player toxicity as well as uh, allow you to collect gold even though you're not last hitting. So tell me about the loadout system. Well, that's going to be basically pre-game, before you queue. You're going to be able to select your hero, select your pet, and select items that you like to play with. OK, so I'm a new player. My whole thing is, OK, I, you know, some pro that I like to watch uses this particular kit, usually. Right. So I just set everything up before the game. I don't have to go to the store and shop. No, not if you don't want to. I mean. It really depends on uh, how the game is, is going. Like, you could have a loadout and, you know, think that you're going to do really well, but if it's not going your way, you can actually go back into the shop and reconfigure your loadout for maybe more armor, magic armor, stuff like that. Okay, so if I'm a pro and I, you know, I feel like the whole loading out ahead of time is beneath me, I can still go full custom. Oh, totally, yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Now. Let's talk about, you, you talked about crafting and pets. Are pets a purely aesthetic thing? Absolutely not. They, they actually serve a great purpose in the game. When you first start the game, you get to select a pet, and it's very, it's like a baby, basically, and it has only a small amount of abilities, but as you play the game, you get commodities at the end of the game that include food. You use the food to feed your pet, and the pet evolves, and actually develops its powers. It grows stronger, it unlocks new passives, and, and makes your active ability much stronger. So basically you guys are trying to make anyone who bought a Tamagotchi 10 years ago feel really stupid about it because they could just have played this game, had that experience, and they get a game for their money. Absolutely. Speaking of money, you guys are aiming for what, 15 heroes, six pets at launch. Now, your monetization model, we all know how League of Legends does it, where you pay for the heroes if they're not on rotation. Uh, how are you guys handling heroes and, and pay, pay to play, so to speak? Well, first off, the game is free to play and the heroes are free to play. So anytime that we design a hero, it will be free to play. Uh, the 15 heroes that you will be able to select from, free to play. You know, the, the things that we monetize will include uh, the commodities for crafting, and also your skins for your different heroes. So I promised Steven we wouldn't talk about gameplay mechanics the whole time. Lead sound designer, he wants to talk about sound. If you guys have been watching me for any amount of time, you'll know I do believe that sound is incredibly important. One of my mantras is go buy a bloody sound card, get some decent headphones, not gaming headphones, good headphones, enjoy your games more. It's incredibly important. And the conductor, which is your baby, is going to make what I'm saying right now even more true. Tell me about this. Well, the conductor is an adaptive music system that ebbs and flows the music based on what's happening to your hero in the game, right? So you start the game, you're in the laning phase, not a lot of action is happening, you're just worried about last hitting creeps and maybe harassing the hero a little bit. So it's very low key, very easy to listen to, you know? Uh, but, but as the game progresses, say maybe you go into the jungle, it's a little more tense, you know, because uh, no one can see where you are, and the music really uh, signifies that. Um, and then maybe you're in a situation where there's a team fight happening, which the music goes huge there. There's a lot of different layers that are happening at that time to, to, to add excitement to the player's experience. So your goal here then is to get the player's heart pumping without them really necessarily knowing, get the adrenaline flowing at the right times without them even really even having to think about it. Yeah, it is a very unconscious, subconscious kind of thing that's happening to music. 
I think that's absolutely cool, and I think that getting away from games being designed to be looked at while you have your music going in your ear, in your ears, and you're completely ignoring it. I mean, the immersiveness is uh, incredibly exciting. So thank you for taking the time to talk to us about this. This is absolutely great, and uh, good luck. My pleasure. Now we're here with Pu Liu, who is the director of monetization for Strife, and uh, you do a bunch of other stuff as well, right? Yeah, I also uh, worked as a lead system designer for Strife, and I work with a game design team as well, making awesome heroes, hopefully. All right, so we're going to have some great conversation with you because it's a free-to-play, and as, as a monetization strategy, free-to-play is anything but mature. It, 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 there's so much more to be experimented with. What are you guys doing with Strife to make it work for you? I think you're seeing uh, free-to-play games popping up all over the place. And a lot of them are going with a cookie cutter kind of dual currency, one you earn and one you get for free, right? Or sorry, one you purchase and one where you, where you get for free for playing. And what we've done with Strife is rather than having that, we've developed commodities. And commodities are something that you earn still, but each of them serves a specific function. So this allows a lot of dynamics as far as what trade-offs you have. When you earn food, you can feed your pets. And when you get ore, you can craft your uh, items. But when you get essences, you can either permanize your items or you can make them better. So there's a lot of trade-offs that don't really exist when you only have one earned currency that exists when you have this more higher level uh, commodity currency. Okay, now speaking of, uh, of crafting items and all that, I want to talk about, uh, okay, it's not related at all, forget the segue, but tell me about the eSports strategy for Strife. What are you guys doing to differentiate yourself from the other stuff that's out there? For eSports, we really want to uh, respond to the demands of what our community wants. So we're still pre-beta. People haven't gotten their hands on it. The only people who played, on, played it are like our friends and our families and our co-workers. So we want to see what our community wants. If they want a top-heavy system in which there's just one invitational tournament that's the, the, you know, the hub of all of that, um, then we'll respond to that. Or if they want something that's more grassroots, more regular automated tournaments that anyone can get access into and maybe the prizes aren't as high for each of them, um, but everyone can participate, then we'll respond to that as well. So we want to see what our player wants to do because at the end of the day, we believe that eSports is a service for the community for everyone to gather around the game and to get really hyped up and really amped and excited. Now the word everyone is interesting because you guys don't want to abandon the hardcores, of course, because hardcore gamers are, are going to be your biggest supporters. But what have you done if you were to pick three things that have made this game more accessible and that are going to help to draw in new players? Well, there are, there's, um, as the MOBA genre has developed, there's been a lot of issues brought forth. So four years ago when we were developing Heroes of New Earth and Riot was developing League of Legends and whatnot, they, we were all focusing on scratching the surface, making sure the genre is going to be fun, it's going to be successful, people are going to play our games. Now that we kind of have the luxury of sitting back and saying, okay, MOBAs are a good formula. We, we can talk about more of the in-depth issues, the issue of toxicity. And a lot of people have brought this up about, about the mobile community. People are kind of assholes sometimes. And um, we, it's, we've really come back and put our fingers on that people are assholes to each other generally when they're on the same team and they disagree about how to win a game. So intra-team conflict has been a huge thing for us. And with Strife, we've done several things to tackle that. We've de developed the game from the ground up from the game design to try to alleviate some of the tensions within your team as far as competing for last hits. Who's going to play the support role that no one wants to play? Who's going to devote all their gold to buying the wards? So there's no purchasable vision. There's no um, supporting by sacrificing. Instead of sacrificing, we allow our support players to still get items and enable their teammates by, and support that way instead. So tell me about the way that gold gets split when you're either sharing a lane with someone or you're in your own lane and everyone else is all over the place in order to make people not be not behave selfishly. Yeah, so every MOBA veteran has probably gone through the argument of I need the last hits, no, I need the last hits, and it comes down to this all or nothing, whoever gets the last hit gets all the gold. And so you're competing with your lane mate as to who gets the last hit. In Stripe, however, you split the gold. And how this works is if you're solo, you get half of the gold bounty of a creep, so say a creep's worth 70 gold, you get 35, and the other half is split across your team evenly, including yourself. So you end up with 42. If you're with another lane partner, you each get half of the gold, so you each get 35. So realistically, if you're soloing, you might get last of the last, less of the last hits than when, when you have a partner helping you out as well. So you actually want your teammate there, but when they're there, you're not fighting over it. You're not taking some, something from them, they're not taking something from you. You're working together toward an end goal together. I mean, the way that I see this is this helps the casual players as well as the, as, as the more competitive players because this does two things. This number one is it makes it so that, that, uh, that one player on a competitive team 
doesn't have to be the bitch right. who has no who has no items by the end of the game and it was basically just kind of running around doing everyone else's dirty work and it also means that for someone who's a more a much more casual player they're not necessarily going to get left behind to the same extent i mean as someone who only ever really played dota 1 as uh, as as far as the moba genre goes i can tell you as someone who kind of played it casually and jumped in by you know, 10, 15 minutes into the game, there was that one guy who was just gonna completely dominate the match, and then there was me, and every time I saw him, he was gonna just totally kick my ass. And what have you guys done to, to, to change that besides just the gold splitting? So another thing we've done is that when you kill a player, the gold you get rewarded with will be dependent on their relative effectiveness and power to you. So gold per minute is a really important metric for us that basically calculates how much gold have you been earning this game. And if you kill someone with less gold per minute than you do, you'll get less gold. And and on the uh, on the flip side, if they kill you and you have higher than them, they get bonus gold. So this really, really incentivizes our top players to go pick on p someone their own size and leave the little guys alone a little bit. And for, for us, Strife is a game that we don't want and we've all, all had this experience where you play a game with your friend, you're trying to introduce them to, to a game. You're not really playing with them, you're playing the same game as them, but you kind of shove them off in a corner. It's like, you learn the game while I go and win it on my own. We really want Strife to be an experience where you're playing with your friends, with your girlfriend, with your, with your kid, not just shoving, off, shoving them off in the corner, buy you awards, whatnot. Well, that is incredibly exciting. Is there anything else that you'd like to add for, for the audience in terms of the innovation that you guys have put into this game? Yeah, I think the last really cool part is that you get to pick your hero before the game starts. So what this allows us to do is not only take the stress off of it a little bit, it's like, oh god, I got 90 seconds, I gotta pick my hero, or everyone's gonna yell at me. Um, no, you get, you get to take your time, pick your hero, pick your gear set, pick your crafted items, um, pick your pet, do everything that you want to do to set up the experience that you have in mind. And then the other thing that does is it allows us to assign a hero-specific elo. So if you have a hero that you're really good with, because you've played it 150 times, we know that. We'll, we'll know your record with that hero, and we'll be able to assign you with teammates and opponents of an equi uh, equitable level so that you have a good game. Whereas, if you're a really high level player, but you're trying a new hero, you might not be rated as high, so you're not punished for trying something completely new. Very cool. Thank you very much. This has been absolutely fantastic, and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.